If you're a watercolor purist, I gotta be honest, this might hurt your eyes. See, I'm more of what you might call a watercolor cheater. Yeah, I like to paint in a way that number one, doesn't stress me out, and number two, yields something really pretty without making me insane. So give me all the cheater supplies, pastel watercolors, ink, gouache. Basically, I'm a mixed media junkie. Friends, you've been asking about these Academy Pastel watercolors. They've been making some appearances here on the channel. And today is the day we're painting a white anemone, but we're going to cheat to paint this white anemone and I'm proud of it. So to understand how what it is that I'm about to do is cheating, let me explain what a watercolor purist is in the context of the fun we're about to have today. A classic watercolor approach is this. If you want anything on your page to be white, you actually save the white of the paper to make it white. So, whoa, what does that mean, Christy? You don't, in classic watercolor terms, ever mix in white paint into your colors. You just mix in water to make a color lighter, or you let the white of the paper shine through to be your super duper ultra highlight. So pastel watercolors are kind of controversial because essentially they are full saturation pigments mixed with white, opaque white. So this isn't to throw shade at my watercolor purist out there because I get it. You paint the purest traditional way because it gives you joy and I'm here for it. I'm just wanting to show everyone a different way. Okay, here they are, friends. This is Academy Pastel Watercolors. Academy is the student grade offshoot of Schmincke. And y'all let me know, I thought it was a new thing, and you let me know that it's been around for a while, but this pastel set is a limited edition that is newer. So there we have set the record straight. Now I've chosen my new Disney Vintage Palette just to give you a little refresher on how I build these palettes from vintage tins, I'm going to walk you through my experience today of building this palette. So a little backstory, my Schmincke collection is growing pretty big. I have the standard 48 set, and then I recently acquired all of the granulating pigments, need to do another video about that one, and now I have the pastels. So my Schmincke pigments need a new home, and today I'm going to start that journey. I do have a full tutorial on how to build palettes in a vintage tin. I'll link it below. If you've watched any of my recent videos, I've been remaking a lot of my palettes, and you know that I'm collecting now these paint chips because I just don't have the heart to throw them away anymore like I was in the past. Okay, I have to admit, I was curious, so I wanted to test out one of these little chips. Now, compared to that German brand that I painted with a few weeks back, these were pretty muted, but it was fun checking it out. Ugh, look at these colors, friends. They all have ice or icy in the name. I have my half pans ready, my black fine point Sharpie pen, which are my go-to supplies for this, and of course, my little magnets. Friends, as you know, or maybe you're new here and you don't know, so I'm glad you're here, I will write the name of the color, on one side of the half pan, and then the name of the brand on the other side. Really important, and for a while, I'll let you in on a little tip. I thought it was fun, I was using clear half pans. Well, I discovered pretty quickly that was a really poor idea, because once the paint was inside of them, and if the paint was dark, I couldn't read all the information that I had just written on them. So. White half pans for the win, 100%. I know you might be excited. You just want to get that paint in there, but don't skip this labeling step. Because when you fall in love with a color and you've used it down to its itty bitty final moments and then you're ready to refill it, but you don't know what the heck color it is, you're going to be pretty darn sad. So don't skip this part. Now, I know we haven't even gotten to the actual painting part of this painting video, but if you're having fun so far, give this video a boop. That's a like, friends. And let me know in the comments how you're feeling about these pastel watercolors. Is it a no for you or a heck yes? All right, it's time to swatch these bad boys. And this is a new swatching technique that I've been using, really just a new shape, these little lightning strokes 
strike marks or S's, really loving them, and you bump the top part of the S and the bottom part up next to the previous stroke, and that's where you get your color mingling for this particular type of swatching. Loving, loving these colors. I will point out, friends, as we're heading into the white anemone painting portion of this video, you're not gonna get a lot of contrast with pastel watercolors. Even at mass tone, which is the, the most saturated, thick application of these pigments, you're not going to get a lot of difference between the sheer application of these pigments in terms of contrast. So something we have to keep in mind. So why even buy pastel watercolors? So let me explain something called convenience colors. And this is for the folks out there like me who don't really love or thrive on mixing colors themselves. So basically a convenience color is a color that's already mixed. You could totally do it yourself, but it would take some time and research. And every time you wanted to use that color, you'd have to mix it perfectly over and over and over again. So with the convenience of pre-mixed colors, these pastel watercolors being a prime example, you take away all of that potential stress. So I'd be inclined to not just call them convenience colors, but call them joy colors. Because not having to always mix the perfect color in the perfect amount for every time you wanna use that color, that's joy inducing. And again, no shade. I know there's many of you out there who actually find color mixing to be cathartic, and I'm all for it. But again, just here to let everyone know there is another way. All right, friends, I mentioned earlier that today's painting session, I'm going to be adding a little bit more to the mix beyond the pastel watercolors. Let's take a look. I'm using Windsor & Newton Pyrrolene Green. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's just a deep, dark, lovely green. And also Windsor & Newton's Olive Green, and those are both professional series. A touch of lamp black, which I know is not my norm, but it works. And I'm using Arches, the Pad Arches. Now, this could be a whole other video itself, but Arches Pad and Arches Block or Loose Leaf Watercolor Paper, in my humble opinion, is not the same despite what the manufacturer's website says, but you can let me know in comments if you had the same experience, but I've been using the pad lately. It's a nice, more affordable option. And then last but certainly not least, I'm gonna be using Gesso today. Friends, I don't do a lot with gouache because I basically mix my watercolor with Gesso when I'm feeling like I wanna amp up the opacity. So I guess you could say I'm even cheating on my pastel watercolors today. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, let's get into this. I'm going to rough out the flower placement. My white anemone is going to be front and center to this composition, friends. And so I am starting just with a big loose circle. I am using a not very well sharpened HB pencil. And that just gives me kind of a blunt edge that is easy to erase as long as I don't press too hard. I'm also roughing in now the center of the anemone because honestly friends the center of every flower for the most part is for me the most iconic part of the flower so I do pay a lot of attention to it roughing out each petal and when I say roughing oh my gosh I mean it these look like little blobs right now but that's the point they're supposed to be simple basic placement that just indicate basic kind of size girth and direction I did just say girth Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm also roughing out very simple lines suggesting where some of the big player leaves will go and sprays of greenery. Friends, if you haven't seen my video about filler greenery bunches, I'm going to link to it below in the information section. It's not to be missed. And I'm just, again, roughing in some of the tones. Uh, a little bit of one of the icy blues as well, just to keep things interesting. You honestly could make this white anemone happen with any of these pastel watercolor tones because they're so soft. And think about it, when you start adding all the darkness, and there's a little bit of a preview of what's coming with some of the additive colors that I've got going on, you're going to get that contrast and that flower is going to look white no matter what. Okay, I just went in with my black 
brush pen marker and added a little bit of black to the center right away. And I know right now this flower looks like a muddy mess, but trust me, friends, it is going somewhere beautiful. I'm going into my addition colors, let's call them, my cheater colors. And I'm going in right away to start creating some of this bunches, filler bunches of greenery. And in just a quick tap and lift and changing the angle of my half inch dagger as I go. And before you know it, you have a lovely cascading vine of leaves. Just change the direction, the overall direction of when you do that press and lift action, and that will change the direction of your spray of leaves. Change how close each mark you make is to one another, like I did just there, and you have more of a lovely raggedy edge leaf that is very indicative of an anemone flower leaf. Remember to do one of my favorite tricks, which is let your brush run out of color as you're working through your composition, like I did just there in the upper right hand corner. And it gives you just a lovely, softer version of the color that you started with. So you see at the bottom, I started with that really intense dark green, but because I let my brush run out as I did my press and lift brush strokes, I now have a beautiful softer variation of that. More press and lift. Notice the angle I'm holding my brush at. I'm constantly changing the angle. I even flipped it over now with the long edge facing downward to create stems that connect all of these leaves. So be very attentive to how I'm changing the angle of my brush. If you need to rewind, rewatch, do it because it's so important to get comfortable with changing the angle of your brush. Now let's stop for a minute, take a look where we're at. We've got the big, beautiful front and center flower in the middle. We've got the two gorgeous sprays. Our composition is really not where it's at yet. It's not where we want it to be. So I'm going to go up here and pencil in a little bud, a little anemone bud. Now this bud, friends, is going to be kind of abstract. I'm not going to be super, super detailed with it. I'm going and grabbing this ice orange which is a weird way to name this color but it's just a creamy yellow it's gorgeous and I'm roughing in that bud and adding some of this creamy orange to icy orange to the main flower don't get nervous this flower right now is muddy by design I, anything that you paint with pastel watercolors if you add in any gray tones any brown tones they're going to start looking muddy but Gesso is going to come to the rescue really soon. And I plan this from the get go. This can certainly be something you plan to bring out the bright whites of your painting with gesso, gouache, or acrylic. Or it can be an afterthought when you try to not cheat and paint a white flower, letting the white of your paper shine through, and maybe things didn't work out perfectly. So gesso can come to the rescue whether you plan for it or not. Now I'm going in hard and bold with my black marker, friends. I forgot to mention the black marker in the section where I talked about materials. I apologize for that, friends. But I went in and I made more of a very concentrated circular shape in the center, leaving a little bit of the lightness of the paper underneath for a shine on that center. And then I went around the circumference of that center and dab and lift, dab and lift over and over over again and the pointed side of my pen is facing outward so I get that skinnier mark on the outermost edge of the circle that I've made with the black. Still using my half inch dagger, I have mixed together a little bit of everything to get this dusty, washy, bluish gray color and now I'm going into those big big player leaves that I sketched in early on and kind of just filling them in, honestly. Now, as I'm feeling confident in my strokes, I'm adding some downturned leaves that are literally just a press, a short drag, about a half inch, three quarters of an inch drag, and then a slow, gradual lift to get that nice pointed end to your leaf. Taking that same gray and dabbing in a little bit in between each of the petals on the anemone flower to start to build some contrast. 
Tip number one when using pastel watercolors, don't be afraid to go mixed media. Pastel watercolors are more opaque by nature. So bring in other colors, other additives, whether it be a marker, whether it be another brand of just straight up watercolor that isn't opaque and blend them together to see what happens. I find pastel, more opaque watercolors to be really coolio when it comes to mingling with their more traditional counterparts. Some magical things happen when a wet puddle of pastel watercolor hits a wet puddle of traditional watercolor or ink from a pen or whatever the case may be. So experiment. At this point in the greenery life of my painting, I am starting to mix the pyrrolene green and that olive with pretty much all of the pastel watercolors as I approach the page, especially when it comes to greenery. So just keep that in mind. I am continuing on with longer strokes here on the right hand side with this yellowish grayish color. Friends, I have to tell you, I am so excited about the colors that this pastel set can make with the addition, even, even if I had just brought in the olive green, let's say. The fact that I can get added contrast while still maintaining the lovely creaminess of these pastel watercolors is pretty exciting, I gotta say. Tip number two when painting with pastel watercolors, use more water in areas because the thing is pastel watercolors, while they are more opaque, when they water down, they still just sheer out beautifully. So don't feel like you have to use them like you would gouache, thickly and heavily, no. Blend them out with tons of water in areas so you can get a nice variety of textures with these watercolors. Continuing on with my favorite, favorite eucalyptus bunch. Love this filler greenery. I'm using a variety of colors that are already on my palette. Two strokes, press and curve. Press and curve and fill in the middle. The most important part of getting this really fun bunch of eucalyptus is just change up the color every time you go back to your palette to load up again. Just grab something that's already on the palette and press and curve twice, fill in the middle. You're gonna have all these lovely wonky oval shaped eucalyptus leaves and you're going to be thrilled with them. Add a little light line down the middle with a contrasting color and you are done. You have the most gorgeous spray filler, a bunch of beautiful eucalyptus that you could imagine. I've switched over to my liner brush friends and I'm starting to go in with the more contrasting colors that are already on my palette and I'm adding a, a little bit of linear detail. Now I mentioned I'm going to be using gesso at some point soon, but I do want to add in some detail at this point, which I know it may seem counterintuitive because I might be putting gesso right over top and covering a lot of it, but that's going to add interesting texture. Friends, you know me. I'm nothing if not weird. I do things a little differently, but I do feel like I get some really cool effects because I'm willing to take these leaps. I'm willing to risk a painting that I love. Because let me tell you what, friends, at this point, I am in love with this painting. And remember, you want to be good to yourself. And when you're happy with something, tell yourself about it, okay? I'm in love with this painting, but I'm willing to risk this painting because I know if I try something really cool, something even more awesome might happen in my painting. And more often than not, my willingness to risk pays off. Starting to bump up the contrast, getting a really nice dark, dark green on my brush. And I'm going in between certain petals. And this is what I call notching, doing little deep Vs where the petals meet. And it's just a way to add instant contrast between leaves in a white flower. This is something I do in all flowers, but it's especially important with white flowers because it really starts to make those leaves 
pop. See what I did on the palette there? I stroked my brush down the palette. That is just a simple way of removing some moisture or pigment excess from your brush. And I went back into my eucalyptus once I felt I had the perfect amount of moisture and pigment on my brush and added in stronger contrasting lines to finish those off. Back to the marker. I am really kind of booping up the intensity of that ruffly blackness that happens in a white anemone. I uh, d uh, clearly don't know the actual scientific term for that. So if anybody knows in the comments, certainly let us know because black ruffly stuff certainly is not it. Um, going in with my liner brush and adding some swoopy loopies around the center really just going around the center with a light touch, swirling and swooping around the diameter of that center, the circumference, diameter, whatever it is, going around the center and creating these soft looping marks. They're gonna be imperfect. Your paint's gonna run out as you go, but what you have is the most gorgeous, lovely texture. Tip number three when you're painting with pastel watercolors, friends, you're probably going to need more water than you would think for whatever reason. And again, I'm sure there's a scientific reason, but I find that I need more water in my paintings when I'm painting with more opaque watercolors, pastel watercolors, or even mixed media where I'm bringing in things like gesso and other brands of watercolors. It just seems that more water helps me out. So just be aware of that. If you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling like things are dragging, if you feel like things are a little chalkier, I mean, they are going to be chalkier. These are opaque, more opaque watercolors, but just bring in a little more water into your mix and you're going to start to feel, feel better, feel that effortlessness that watercolor sometimes gives us. More water, everything will feel better, I promise. Adding in a few berries, of course, you guessed it, with that icy pink. I just used the tip of my half inch dagger. It's a little bit a big of a brush to be doing that, but that's why I love daggers because that tip gives me a lot of nice control for smaller areas. And I'm not adding much contrast to these berries, going right in with my liner brush and a soft green that's already existing on my palette. Friends, can you believe I'm mixing this much on a palette? Because I'll tell you what, I can't. I can't believe I'm mixing this much on a palette, but it's kind of fun. So creating just simple little scratchy lines in between the berries to suggest branches, and then a few press and lift leaves at the very top of the berry bunch on the left-hand side, just a few press and lift, changing the angle of my brush just a little bit to give a quirky little swag of greenery, and just a few press and lift touches, very small at the bottom right, and oh my gosh, friends, I'm so happy with this, but honestly, my anemone is muddy. She's muddy. I'm not surprised. I mentioned it earlier. I knew she was going to be muddy because I'm using pastel watercolors and I didn't save the white of my paper. So it is time for one of my favorite things, which is gesso. Gesso is what's traditionally used to prime a canvas uh, because canvas, you know, it's like a ivory color. So folks will use it to prepare the canvas, make it a more hospitable color and make it a more ob obviously more hospitable texture to paint on. Gesso is basically like a watered down acrylic and friends, I love gesso. When I'm bringing in white into any of my paintings, I will either use gesso, sometimes a gel pen, but 98 times out of 100, it's gesso. And friends, look at that. You can add a lot of texture. In one stroke, you can reimagine an entire flower. It's incredible. Watch the transformation. Yes, I'm going over top of what I've already painted. I'm obscuring some of the detail that I already painted, but just by simply following the contours of the sketch that I placed originally and of the watercolor brush strokes that I laid down after the sketch, just by following those contours, I am letting this flower come to its full awesomeness. Now, of course, I'm going out over top with some quick press and lift, press and lift to get a few little suggestions of tiny, tiny filler leaves, or they could be flowers. These could be little um, lily of the valley for all we know. Just a little suggestion of white in a few other areas throughout the composition. And friends, 
I risked a lot with this painting, with this composition, with these materials, but there is so much reward for your risk. Nine times out of 10, your risk in art, your risk in creativity, it's going to pay off, friends. It's worth it. It's worth it. Because let me tell you what, even if it's a complete flop and your risk takes you to a point where you want to rip up the painting. You know what, friends? You painted it once. You can paint it again. Paint it again and risk again because what happens at the end of risk is either learning or a complete and utter breakthrough and it's all good. <laughs> I get so excited and I'm getting a little choked up because this is such important stuff that we're doing here for our joy right? It is. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna stop crying. And if you want to now paint a white flower without cheating, I want you to watch this video next. And friends, happy, happy painting.